Hey, and, and thanks and welcome to OpenAperture.com. Uh, here I'll be talking about, man, uh, my kit, things inside of my kit, why I have my kit. That's it. So, like I said, I was going to talk about my bag. Uh, this is uh, a bag, you know, all us soldiers like to shop on, on eBay and Amazon. But I was uh, perusing Amazon while I was in Afghanistan, like I said, and I picked up the uh, Active Pack. Uh, it was fifty nine dollars. <laughs> it was really the best fifty nine dollars that I've paid. It lasted a war. I don't know too many bags that can do it, but this one did. Full with Afghan dust. See. All right. So we'll start off. Uh, most of the compartments are uh, on the front. You have uh, the short, the short um, pouch here. Unfortunately, when I got these patches put in, the tailor sewed straight through. Thank the Afghans for that, people. All right, moving on. Here's the first section. We'll call this section A. It's big enough for you to fit uh, full size. I believe this is a 17 inch or 15 inch um, Apple laptop. And I'll put that down. And then you have little box, uh, little spaces and compartments where you can put everything in. Close that up for you. And Along with that, you know, of course it has that Velcro ceiling. Then you go down to the bottom part. The bottom section, uh, we'll call this B, has enough space for you to put a notebook, but my favorite things to carry, batteries. We'll get into a little bit more later on on why I have this many batteries and why you shouldn't. Moving on to the side, every great camera bag should come with one of these. The tripod case tripod carrier uh, secured with a strap, and of course this is my my tripod. I bought that from Calumet. It was only thirty bucks. I got it on sale, pretty rugged. Moving over to the other side, we have a case that's for uh, cell phones. You put cell phones in here. This will not hold uh, Android. But it will hold a uh, candy bar style uh, uh, cell phone. So if you got a little slim one, a skinny one, it'll fit in there. Grandma's old flip phone definitely will fit in there. Moving on down here for our uh, final side compartment. This can actually hold that uh, the iPhone and Android inside of it. But I choose to hold, guess what, more batteries. Useless, <laughs> useless. But you know what? I suggest that you um, that you put your power pack inside of here for your flash, um, or extra batteries for for whatever. I, I would recommend using this case or this side for that. Um, of course, it has a great handle for you to drag, grab, and go. It's kind of like my go bag, and you guys better know what this is. Moving on past there. This is the actual laptop case, uh, the actual laptop holding area. I would actually recommend that uh, you put your laptop in this area because it's padded. It can fit up to a 19 inch screen inside of here. I know it because I've tried it. All right. And every good camera bag also has one of these. This, hey guys, you've been in the military? What does this look like? A poncho liner. You throw it right over your bag. You have a, a, a enclosure or a, a holder right here, right above where you put your laptop at. Put it, uh, put it on the inside of it. Close it. And this thing will stay nice and, it'll, it'll keep water from penetrating for up to three hours. I've been out in the rain with this, I've shot uh, pictures in the rain with this, it's, it's held out for about three hours. Uh, you have that nice plastic coating on the inside that assists with it. And it dries easy because of the, uh, I guess, the moisture wicking technology or some, something like that. I don't know. Uh, but that's the outside of the bag. Um, the, next, the next couple uh, minutes, I'm going to take you on the inside where you'll see the different adjustable compartments. So here's the inside of my bag. Um, 
you have one pouch here, you have a pouch here, um, and we also have the, the standard camera bag that allows you to uh, customize it. We have uh, Velcro here, you know, and that's this section. I'm going to come back to this section uh, as soon as I finish with this one. Let's open this puppy up. All right, so inside of this bag, you know, we have most of my, you know, uh, lens cleaning kits. So we need to definitely have this. You have multi-thousand dollar uh, pieces of equipment or at least a couple hundred dollar lenses inside your bag. Pay for the equipment. Uh, pay to keep it in the best shape possible. Uh, I also have for my Strobus collection, uh, I got this from off of Amazon for roughly $26. Uh, this is actually uh, lens gel or correction filters, aka flash gels. What these do is they correct the colors or uh, add different color balances to your, uh, to your composition. So you definitely want to pick these up if you're into flash photography. This is something I believe that everyone should have, even if you don't have a touch screen. This is uh, just just a mask. This is just a mask to make sure that uh, you don't get any type of mess on the back of your screen. I purchased two of these for five dollars from off of Amazon, and like I said, uh, I'm using one currently on the back of my camera. This is just the second one. Extra cleaning cloth. Uh, for people who shoot infrared, I find it. I think that you might find it very hard for you to locate one of these. This is an infra, uh, infrared uh, beacon. What it does in effect is it flashes three different strobe types uh, out, but it's on the infrared signal, so you can't tell that it's flashing. Really cool for uh, night photography if you have a, a infrared filter in order to, uh, to capture this. And I also have a Tiffin lens clean paper. I still have the, the price tag on it. I picked it up at, at my local camera, uh, camera location. Comes with 50 sheets. Uh, they're usually just come like this and these are the sheets. You get a, clean, a cleansing solution with it. Uh, I also bought the Tiffin lens cleaner in order to uh, to support using this this type of uh, lens cleaning paper and here it is the Tiffin lens cleaner this is for also uh, before I got a diffuser this was a type of diffuser that I was using it costs 15 bucks for me to use it it's just uh, a piece of white plastic <laughs> that has black and then you use this rubber band It's by Apteca uh, you can get it online and you just put it around your your off off camera flash in order to diffuse the light uh, it's kind of a soft box a portable soft box and it folds really neat I really liked it and I got a lot of use out of it before I upgraded uh, you'll see what I upgraded to a little bit later but let me uh, put these things away Moving on to the second pouch here. And then the second pouch, the way that I compartmentalized everything is I put my um, my additional filters. As you see, I put a piece of tape on there and wrote what type of aperture or what type of lens it could uh, it could protect. Inside of this, uh, I have uh, the standard uh, UV protector. I have my uh, FLD. Which changes the lighting that um, the lighting frequency that I'm able to pick up within the camera. So if you want to add kind of a dreamy or peachy color to your shots, that's what I have. This is a FLD, uh, and this is also uh, two ne neutral density filters. Uh, this is a 0.9 and this is a 0.6. Great thing to remember about your neutral densities is that they're uh, they're you can screw them on top of each other. Always handle them. On the on the edges and don't grab them by the lens but what you can do with them is you can screw them together 
and I have a 0.9 and a 0.6. Each one equals three f-stops uh, more time. So um, right there between, between them, I have roughly uh, another eight stops uh, added to my camera. So if it's a bright and sunny day and I really want to capture a picture, then I'll just pull out my neutral density filters in order to, um, to capture the picture uh, and, and the best quality possible. Um, what else? I mean, pull out my 58 millimeters. Same, same uh, layout. I have a neutral density here and I have a circular polarizer. They don't, you can't tell the difference between two right now. But looking at this one, this is my circular, circular polarizer. I believe everybody needs one. Uh, the reasons why I believe everyone needs one of these is because there are times when you are shooting over a lake and you want to um, capture pictures without reflection. That's what this baby does. You put it right, right over your lens, uh, take off your UV filter and just put this one on and you turn it. As you can see, it turns. You just turn it until the reflection is gone and then you'll have a crystal, uh, crystal clear photo. So uh, those are the only uh, the only lens uh, filters that I have right now currently. Although I do have a few other lenses that are uh, outside of those millimeter classes. With that said, we'll move over to the other section, the 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 great section. We'll start off at the top right here because it's my favorite place. Let's be honest here. I'm a photographer. And I need to keep my um, keep my nerves clear. What do I do? Pick up my wonderful beer. Uh, th right now I have 312. Everyone must have a bottle of beer with them so that you can take the edge off. Uh, right now I have 312, but uh, there are other beers that I, that I enjoy also. Uh, if you focus right on back down, uh, like I said before, you can customize this bag to hold pretty much anything. Any way, any, any possible combination that you can come up with. I'll start off at the top and work my way down. Here is uh, my Nikon, or uh, my Nikon 18 to 105. The VR is for vibration reduction. Uh, everyone knows about it, and it has an auto and a manual, it has an auto and, ma and manual uh, setting so that you can flip it here for automatic but as you saw when I opened it up as a manual because I like to have control when I'm shooting uh, we have a tulip lens hood here uh, there are a plethora of different type of lens hoods but uh, this one is made specifically for this lens so that it captures the best light uh, and blocks out all ambient light so we get the best picture po uh, possible and we'll take it off. Uh, on top of it, I have my Hama UV uh, 67 uh, lens filter. And what that does is not only uh, equalizes the sunlight that comes in or the light that comes in and hits the, hits the actual um, aperture, but it also acts as protection. You'll find uh, that most photographers have a UV filter on it. But it, this is a beautiful lens. I really love it. Uh, here's the back of it. Really nice, really clean, very open. Um, it's very smooth in its transitions. Um, this this is my all-purpose lens. I really like it, and I've been able to take a lot of different type of pictures in it. Actually, I had this one when I went to Spain. Uh, I, I took a trip to Spain, and this was one of my go-to lenses. Leaving that one, here comes the bane of my existence. Are you ready? <laughs> the filthy 50. Everybody calls it the nifty 50 and the, the ultra wonderful 50. This is my uh, AF Nikkor uh, Nikkor uh, 50. It, uh, it's a 1.8D. Here it is. It's a very simple lens that everyone is yelling about. You must have it in your collection, they say. I hate this lens, to be honest with you. I really, I think that it does a great job when you're taking uh, photos of people uh, doing all sorts of uh, 
what pictures of of your family or you might want to take a picture of you and your your girlfriend or something like that. Yeah, you you'll use this lens. But if you're if you're looking for a robust power, I don't find it here. But I'll I'll continue working with it and see what I can get out of it. Uh, it's great in low light situations, or so I'm told. So I'll put that the filthy fifty back in the hole to which it came from. Moving on from there, this is my favorite lens. This is the Rokinon eight millimeter lens. This one has a, a mounted tulip uh, tulip cover or lens shade. The original um, purpose for this uh, for this particular type of lens was what I picked it up for. I, I was in the middle of Afghanistan, I was surfing the web, and then I saw these pictures with star trails and capturing everything. So I started doing a quick Google search and I found out that people were shooting with the with the um, eight millimeter or with the fisheye lens. Uh, they come in a, a variety of, of sizes. I believe that eight millimeter is uh, the second widest that you can get, uh, but it's been a really great, really great lens. Drawback with this one is because I have a DX, uh, a DX camera, which means that it's not full frame. Um, I can't from my um, from my thumb controls on my Nikon uh, change the um, the the different f stops but right here I, I shoot manual anyway so it's right here to my to my disposal this is a again like I said a really beautiful lens and I've captured a lot of beautiful uh, scenery uh, it's, it's it's just I really love this lens moving on. This one is is my second uh, my second telephoto lens. This is my uh, 55 to 300 millimeter lens. It's right here is a, a a Nikon. It's made for the DX body. Like all my other ones, it has an automatic and a manual uh, a vibration reduction on and off switch. And I also because this uh, lens opening is 58 millimeter. Uh, I have my Tiffin uh, UV protector right on top of it. This lens is great if you need to capture things up close and far away. Um, it the, the glass in itself is a beautiful piece. I bought this online for close to uh, $400. I believe I paid $360 for this. And it's... This is, a, this is a workhorse. If you're into landscape photography, this is the lens that you want to get because you can zoom in to mountain ranges and capture prairies uh, with just the adjustment going from, uh, going from 55 all the way to 300. So uh, if you're in the market looking for something to capture that uh, long range shots and things like that, just pick this one up. It's pretty cool. Uh, if you look into my bag, you'll see that I have a lot of my a lot of my lenses inside of the the bag that they came with the camera bag. Um, I a lot of people say that it's a it's a wasted effort, but I said, hey, I spent over a hundred dollars for this equipment, and to be honest with you, I'll be damned if I damage it because I was being ridiculous or I didn't take proper care of it. I want to keep as much dust out as possible. Now, this is something that I'd like you guys to know. Uh, when I got back from Afghanistan, I took my camera and I took my lenses into, um, into my local camera store to, to find out if they need to be cleaned because I'm in the middle of Afghanistan. It's a bunch of dust everywhere, getting into everything. The guy said that, this, uh, that these lenses and my camera body were the most immaculate uh, pieces that I bought, it, uh, that he had seen, you know, in a long time. So that goes to show that just with a little bit of care, preventative maintenance, you won't have to worry about going out and buying brand new camera equipment. I'm not rich, you know, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys don't have a couple hundred dollars just to flush down the toilet. So don't do it. Uh, my next, uh, my next, my favorite, my most favorite lens is on the body of my camera. 
this is a Nikon D5000 that I'm working with right here. Um, <laughs> this camera is awesome. Uh, I actually traded a point and shoot. I traded a point and shoot for this camera. Um, a friend of mine uh, had a, a, a cousin that was tired of uh, walking around and carrying this machine or, or this beautiful work of art. And believe it or not, I, I approached her and she wanted to trade me my point and shoot for this plus $200. Now, I know the, the average price on this this camera is, is right now $800. But when I when I purchased it, it was like a grand. Um, but this is one of the, one of the best investments that I did, and I would trade it again if I had the opportunity. I trade it again. Uh, the pictures that I got out of this uh, out of this camera, uh, they're they're really nice. But enough about that. Here's my ten to twenty. It's a Sigma uh, EX Sigma right here. Comes with a tulip lens, uh, a tulip tulip lens hood, and look at that glass. Now, if you're going out to shoot and you want to capture uh, a storefront or uh, you want to capture a length of a street with very little distortion, this is your camera. When you look at my club shots on on uh, on Nikos Nikon and Open Aperture. These are the these are this is the the lens the very lens that's capturing these beautiful beautiful images. Um, around it, I have the um, I have the Sunpack seventy seven millimeter ultraviolet uh, lens cover. So uh, again, like I said, you want to always 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 have a lens filter over your over your glass. I would rather damage a lens filter. Than the actual lens itself, uh, it cost me enough to get it. Uh, this is a four to five point six, um, and it it has done nothing but bring really good things to me. Uh, with the Nikon D five thousand, again we have a HDMI port, we have all the standard points, and and even a port for you to put the remote release, uh, the trigger release inside of your camera, so that you can take hands free shooting. The one thing that I did take off of this camera that needed to definitely go was the neck strap that goes right here. I took my neck strap and traded it in for uh, the Rapid, uh, the Black Rapid Sport. This is a lifesaver. When I'm out and I'm shooting, um, shooting club photography, I'm running up and down the streets, you know, trying to find the next thing that I want to shoot. This is this is how I'm securing it. Uh, on the bottom of the Black Rapid Sport, you have um, a insert that is just like your tripod that screws right in, and it has a rubber stop on it. You see that? That rubber stop uh, prevents slippage or it twists in the opposite direction. You also have a twist, uh, a twist locking mechanism. For um, for the clasp, and as you can see, I put a piece of tape on it. I paid enough money on lenses and camera to know I don't want to I don't want to uh, try to lose anything by mistake. Uh, this is a stop. You can set this stop so that the camera uh, it it stops the camera from moving left and right when it's coming on your hip and when you need to lift up and take a picture. That's what those are for. Also. Um, on the black rapid another reason why you should have a black rapid again is all inside the pouches again we have a pouch here and inside my pouch what I keep in here are multiple SDs I got extra SDs in here and business cards everybody needs business cards Right here in the chest, I'm not going to forget that they're there. I can reach in. People want to find out where their pictures are going to be posted. Bam. Here you go. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. And uh, that's, where you, that's where you're going to go and you're going to find it. That's what I have as far as camera toting equipment. 
and my camera itself I showed you. Let's go back down to the to the bag itself. If you don't have one, you better ask somebody. You need to go ahead and pick one of these up. It maybe not the young you uh the young Nuo 560, but you need an off-camera flash. Uh, if you're out and you're taking pictures for uh, for people, uh, be it the beauty shots or uh, you're taking club photos, this is what you need. Uh, with this, with this, uh, with this specific flash, what I what it does, it carries four batteries, or it has space for you to put a power pack in it. Remember earlier when I had a bag full of batteries? This thing eats batteries for breakfast. I'm saying four batteries will just last you about 30 shots. Now, you may think that that's pretty bad, but guess how much I spent on this thing? 54.18. I got it off of uh I got it off of Amazon and this thing has been working like a pro. You just hold the button, you cut it on, and before you know it, you can hit the, uh, the pilot button here to test fire your shots. You can also adjust your zoom, how far you want to be able to um, have that beam of light penetrate. This is adjustable, going left and right, goes 360, uh, goes in every, every direction as the professional one. Uh, there was a, a review that was placed between this one and the Canon uh, Speedlight 560, and this one won out. If you don't get something like this, I, I mean, I know I'm saying that, you know, $60, $60 isn't much. But if you can't do that, then I've even used this. This is uh, the Speedlight SP400. It moves, uh, it, it has some adjust, but when you're shooting off camera, there's one piece of equipment that you're going to need at all times. And, uh, give me a second, let me grab it for you. Here it is, right here. This is, I bought it from, uh, from Calumet. It's an off camera, uh, TTL sync cord. This part goes to the top of your camera, like so. It's really simple. You slide it on. It's a locking mechanism there. You lock it. Then you take this one. What makes this a really great purchase, it has a slot for a remote cord to go into. Also, at the bottom, if you want to screw this thing into a tripod, you can. Or... You can slide this on top of another uh, on top of another flash so that you have compound flash. But you take this and you can slide this on, lock it in place, and then go about and, and take pictures. Just with this, have an off-camera flash. When you're at the when you're at the club or when you're taking pictures of people, uh, what off-camera flashes do is they allow three-dimensionality to come into your pictures. Absolutely, uh, last case scenario, do you use this? I mean, this will flatten your images unless you buy a diffuser. They do sell diffusers that go across this, but it doesn't produce enough flash in order for you to capture uh, some of those more, um, more beautiful pictures that they have on the strobist or things like that. So. Uh, I want you always have, uh, you should get one of these definitely, but you should definitely also get one of these or one of these. It, it'll, it'll make your, it'll make your flash complete. It'll, it'll make your photography come alive. I promise you. All right. So I'm going to sit this off to the side, going back down to my uh, bag here. Inside, I've shown you the, the Tiffin lens cleaner, but this is also something else that I want you to focus on. Uh, if you get me a zoom in, a nice close-up on that. This is this is our Speedlight um, honeycomb adapter. What this does is made by Apteca, 
really great company. What this does is it normalizes the light that comes out of your flash. So if you look at this, it's the same on both sides, but if you look through the holes, it's probably a pretty uniform amount of light coming through. You take off this diffuser, take it off, you put this on, and then you um, go around or you, you go to the side of your, your flash, and then it just sits on top of your flash just like that. When your flash fires out, all of the light that comes out will come out in one uniform array so that you don't have to worry about hot uh, highlights or, or hot spots within your photography. That's all, uh, all I have to say about that. Putting that back in there. And last but, uh, last but not least, there are two items that I have not spoken to. You definitely need to get an extra battery. Worst case scenario, you're out shooting and you run out of juice in your camera. Don't be uh, left out in the dark uh, because you didn't have enough power. Go ahead and ch charge both of them up so that when you go out and shoot, you have more than enough energy. Secondly, uh, this is made by Pixel. This is a, a camera release. What this allows you to do is push the button and take pictures, thus reducing uh, shakiness or uh, increasing the stability of your shot. You can also push down and push up and it'll stay uh, and allow you to take multiple shots. If your camera is set to shoot multiple shots, as long as that's depressed, that uh, it will engage that mechanism. And also, if you're doing bulb exposure, this will allow you to manually hold that, hold that shot without actually shaking or touching your tripod or touching your, touching your actual camera. So you just unflick it when you're done. You don't put batteries in it. It runs off the energy of your camera. Remember, if you do not have a charged up camera, and you try and use this, it's not going to work because it pulls energy from the camera. And with that said, this is, uh, this is my kit. This is what I shoot with. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and, and checking out this, uh, this week's review. Uh, I do have one extra thing that I can show you. This is my Pelican case. Uh, this is the, uh, it's the 1010 series, I think. Uh, people should go out and purchase one. What this is, is uh, this is part of my uh, kit to take down or to tighten up my tripod assembly. This is also just an extra plug in case I need to charge something that takes USB. But what this is, is it's a waterproof, watertight way for you to store things. So if I want to take my battery and put it in there and not worry about it, just close it up. I've also put uh, put Velcro on the back or hook and loop, whatever you want to call it, on the back of this, uh, this device so that when I put it inside my camera bag and I close it, I know it's not shaking around and destroying my equipment. So I, I was just thinking how to, uh, how to reduce possibility for accidents to occur. Other than that, that is the complete total kit that I walk around with on my back to take the beautiful pictures that I take. Thanks for tuning in. I know you got a lot out of it. I enjoy talking to you about it. See you next week.